Good morning. I think our sign is all wrong. Nothing wrong with that sign. Uh, the print's too small. I just went by McGarrett's and they're signing them right and left. Uh, well, that doesn't have anything to do with the sign. Why don't you pour yourself a cup of coffee? I don't want any coffee. I want men. I have a whole fruit crop to harvest, and McGarrett and the others are signing them like they're giving something away for nothing. Uh-huh. By the way, are you questioning these people like you're getting them ready for jury duty? Jury duty? What are you talking about? Well, word is going around town that you're practically cross-examining these people. Now, look, Nicholas, you said to me, get me the right men. Now, that's what I'm trying to do. Isn't that what you want? I want men. Any man who is ready, willing, and able to work, I would like to have. Now, if you see one of these, grab them, hold them, and sign them. But do me a favor, will you? What's that? But don't ask them any questions. All right, Nick. Fine. <laughs> Just, just passing through. I heard Don Salinas, they're looking for hands up here. Oh, no, you can't believe everything you hear, Waldo. Hey, look, welcome Harvest Hands. Best pay, come in, sign up now. Oh, no, I, I just been in there. They all signed up, have been for days. Yeah, but those men there. Oh, poor fools, they're gonna get the same sad story I got. Yeah, but... Oh, to tell him to take his sign down. I just ought to do it. I hear that there's another place right down the street that's got a couple of openings. Now, why don't you hurry on down there, Waldo, and get them before they all taken up? I'll run back in here. I'll tell this fella, take a sign down, and I'll meet you down there. Now, go on. Go on. Hurry Well, on. thanks, Eli. Gee, thanks. You sure as well to put me on to this. Thanks, Eli. Hey, what's the big idea? That man's looking for work, isn't he? That's right. You hired him, and I quit. They ain't a ranch in California big enough to hold the two of us. Harmless to me. Yeah? He's worse than any gunfighter you ever heard of. Because with a gunfighter, you got a chance to draw. With him, there's no way to defend yourself because you don't know when or where nor how it's coming. What's his game? His game is bad luck. He's a Joner. Last town he worked in burned down the very day after he arrived. And the last ranch he worked on, the steers got mixed in with the neighbor's sheep. They had been peace in that county for 10 years. And the day he left, there was a full-scale range war going on. You don't say. Oh, Mr. McGarrett, I sure do. Everywhere he goes, there's trouble. And nobody in his right mind would work anywhere near him. And that's a fact. Uh, that's, uh, Waldo Diefen? Diefendorfer. Waldo Diefendorfer. Once you repeat it a couple times, <clears throat> I guess it's still kind of hard to say. <laughs> yes, well, good luck, Mr. Diefendorfer. You too. Lots of it. Now, you boys stop that. Now, cut it out. One of you is going to get hurt. <laughs> now, you cut that out. Hey, now, give me that. Now, get out on home. Hey.
Ain't this place something? You know, Penelope, this could be the start of a whole new life for us. Let's go find the foreman. Come on. Prettiest sight a cowboy ever did see. Yes, he's beautiful. Seems a shame to break him, though. Oh, don't you worry now, Miss Audra. I wasn't hired to ruin Barclay horses. I'm just gonna bend his spirit a little to yours. I don't know. Oh, I'm Waldo Diefendorf. Audra Barkley. Oh, one of the Barkleys? <laughs> Gee, I'm sure glad all the other ranches were filled and I could come here. I'm looking for the foreman. That'd be my brother. Nick! Someone to see you! Like I said, I'm sorry about that horse that ran away. I hope it wasn't my fault. How could it be? You were just passing by. Sometimes that's enough. Yeah, Audra, what do you have? Uh, Nick, this is Mr. Dief Diefendorfer. How's that again? I'm Waldo Diefendorfer. I signed up in town to work here. Well, you, uh, bunk in bunkhouse number three. It's up by the house. Charles will be in 15 minutes. Three? That could be my lucky number. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure meeting you, Miss Barkley. The stable your uh, burrow in the barn. Sir, could I stake her at the bunkhouse? Penelope likes to be with me late at night, and vice versa. Ah, uh, well, uh, yeah, suit yourself. Go ahead. I don't know. I just don't know. What? I don't know. Fellas, I'm Waldo. Don't bother about me. Just go on doing what you're doing. You can dump your gear over there. Oh, thanks. Sure. His name is Hank Deemers. I'm sort of put in charge here. Glad to have you with us. Thanks. Lots of give. Nice. Yeah, the Barclays got the best beds in the valley. Chow ain't bad either. Yeah. You're lucky to sign on here. That's what I figured. I guess your blanket's out back. Oh, you don't have to bother. There's no bother. We all work together here. One big happy family. Hey, uh, don't I know you from somewhere? Uh-uh. You sure? Uh-huh. I ain't never been any place. I mean, that counts or anything. What'd you say your name was? Waldo. Your last name? Um, uh, Diefendorfer. Sounds kind of familiar. Oh, there are lots of Diefendorfers. The world's full of them. You got me mixed up with one of those. Somebody else. Could be. <laughs> Tell me, Nick, how are you coming along with the harvest hand? Well, it looks like we've got a full crew, but... But what? You should know. You hired him, Diefendorfer. Diefendorfer. Whatever. Brother Jared, I told you to sign on anybody. Scrape the bottom of the barrel if you had to, but come on. Diefendorfer? Diefendorfer. Waldo Diefendorfer. All right, all right. But does he look like a farmhand to you? Nah, Nick, what does a farmhand look like? Let's not have any courtroom tricks, lawyer man. Would someone mind letting me in on this? Brother Jared here signed on, um... Diefendorfer. 
Yeah, yeah, well, he doesn't know a peach from a ripe tomato. Now, Nick, that's cruel. Well, I should think the point is, can he do the job? Well, the odds against it. Nick, why don't you stop picking on him? He hasn't even had a chance to prove himself yet. Why don't you at least wait and see? Who knows? You may be in for the surprise of your life. Got that runaway horse yesterday. It's a strange thing. I can't figure it out. It's the first time one ever cut out on me. Just can't figure it. Ours is not the reason why. Don't you agree? I guess. All right, you man, let's go. You too. Come on. If it's all the same to you, Mr. Nick, I'll ride Penelope. You'll ride with the rest of us. Come on, get aboard. That's what you want, sir. Three days have gone by. It's been one thing after another. First, the transport wagon collapses. Mm, equipment wears off. That was a brand new wheel, and so was the axle brand new. And what about the next day when the ladder folded up and one of my men busted his arm? Don't tell me anything about that ladder, because it happened to be brand new, too. Seemingly. What about this afternoon when the freight wagon backed up too far and crushed 20 crates of fresh-picked fruit? Amen. What is that supposed to mean? What it usually means, the end. You've had your share of mishap, so now it'll be clear sailing. You really expect me to believe that? I do. Wonderful. Mother, do you realize how many man hours we have wasted? Do you know how much money it has cost us? And do you happen to know where that puts McGuff? McGarrett. No. He could be responsible for all this bad oh, luck. Nick. I would not put it past Nick, him. Nick, I have known Frank McGarrett for over 25 years. Then you ought to know how he operates. Oh, no, he's a tough competitor, but he would never do anything like that. And that leaves who? Why does it have to leave anybody? the men go into town Saturday night and stay over. Well, to tell you the truth, I kind of like to be alone sometimes. I think I know what you mean. You do? Mm -hmm. Funny, doesn't make a difference where you are or who's around. You know what I mean? Sometimes I feel exactly the same way. Me too. Of course, that's what Penelope included. Of course. Still, it's nice to have somebody to talk to. Sometimes. Like you, I mean. There are some people who make you feel to home right away. Like the first time I saw you, Miss Audra, I walked right up to you, talked right to you. I don't usually speak to strangers, especially the opposite sex. But I must admit, in your case, I made an exception. 
That's the honest truth. I'm very flattered. You are? Hey, Miss Audra. Been looking for you. Remember that herd of Mustangs I was telling you about? Yes. Well, it was spotted headed north. I think they're going towards Box Canyon. Want to ride with me? Do you really think you can find them? Well, if I can, no one can. Come on, let's go. I'll see you later, Waldo. Uh-huh. Penelope, if it wasn't your day off, we'd go out after those Mustangs, too. Hey, Sid, how about lend me some of your hair tonic? I'm all out. What for? What do you think for? You ain't going no place. <laughs> oh, no? Going up to the big house tonight. Come on, you couldn't get in the back door. And if you're talking about Miss Audra... That's exactly who I'm talking about. I'm taking her to the dance on Tuesday night. <laughs> this I gotta see. You come to the dance on Tuesday night, you will see. Where is he? Let me at him. I knew it. I felt it. Where is he? Where's who? Stephen Doffer. I told you there was something fishy about him tonight. Oh, Hank, don't start that all over again. What about that transport wagon breaking down? And Charlie falling off that ladder? And all those crushed crates of fruit that took us hours to pick? It's all his doing. He's a jinx. Sure. Go ahead, laugh. Who's laughing? The Garrett's men are. In town. They're laughing themselves sick about it. One of them palmed off deep and off around the Barclays. They know him from way back. They've given him a wide berth. Now we're stuck with him. Who knows what's gonna happen next? Well, what do you aim to do? I don't know. You want some advice? Take it straight to the Barclays. It's their crop. Nick, you're not really going to go through with this silly test. The boys in number three are not kidding. And by tomorrow morning, it's going to spread to the other bunkhouses, and nobody's going to get even near this Waldo. Oh, Heath is down to Modesto, and I've got this whole ranch to run all by myself. I've got crops to harvest, and I'm not taking any chances. The little test goes on. Nick, the whole thing is ridiculous. I will not let superstition run this ranch. Waldo wouldn't hurt a fly. Talk all you want, it doesn't change a thing. I happen to know there are real live Jonas. Now, don't ask me why. I don't know. It just, it's just the way it is. Now, listen, sis. People like Waldo, they, well, they don't mean to hurt anybody. It's just that, well, calamity seems to follow them around like a hungry hound dog. And I am going to prove that Waldo Diefendorfer is a born loser. I'll get it. Come in, Waldo, please. Oh, my gosh! Oh. I nearly broke it. Somebody must have moved it. it. It was in the way. Oh, I don't know. Nice place you got here. Big, too. What is it your brother, Mr. Nick, wants to see me about? Well, actually, the whole family's in there. They all want to see me? Mm-hmm. Well, what do you know? What's it all about? Well, it's a game, sort of. Oh. You know my brothers, Nick and Jared. Mr. Nick and Mr. Jared. And this is my mother. How do you do, Mr. Diefendorfer? Mrs. Barkley, it's a real pleasure, also an honor. Well, thank you, Mr. D. Friends call me Waldo. Bosses, too. Uh, Waldo, will you sit down here and join us for a minute, here? Oh, yes, sir. We're going to cut for a high card. Me? Mm -hmm. Oh, I never gamble. <laughs> well, there's no money involved. Then what? Waldo, remember I mentioned a game? Oh, yeah. All right, I'll cut first. <laughs> A three. Your turn, Waldo. Yes, ma'am. A deuce. All right, let's try it again. Now, this time you cut first, Waldo. But... It's all right, just cut. A four. 
isn't over yet. Well, it is now. Read it and weep. All right, once more. Never tempt fate, Brother Jared. A king! Oh, Waldo, that's wonderful! It is? Well, now we look here at what I drew. Looks to me to be an ace. Enough. I still say it doesn't prove a thing. Thank you, Walter. Thank you very much for cooperating. That's the game? That's all? That's all. Well, would you like some coffee? Or some cookies? Well, gee, thanks. But I gotta get up early. A man can't be tired and do a full day's work. Bosses might complain. <laughs> Night, everybody. Night, Miss Audra. Now, what did that prove? Three cuts of the card do not amount to a run of bad luck or the stroke of doom. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. This is a nice big piece. You'd better go now, Waldo. I guess I wasn't looking where I was going. I'm sorry. Night, folks. Wonderful. Now, what do you think? I think it's broken. But I don't think it had anything to do with being a Jonah. I agree. Well? I'll, uh, go along with Jared and Audra. Well, he is willing, isn't he? And honest and loyal. And, uh, uh... Polite. Whose side are you all on, anyway? Well, just trying to be fair. What do I tell the hands out there? They want me to get Waldo off their backs. Oh, I'm not worried about that, Nick. You'll find the right words. Well, we'll give it another day or two. Ah, now, boy, Nick, after all, it can't get any worse. Who said? See you later. Take care. I can take a hint. Nobody has to hit me over the head, do they, Penelope? Now, let's see, Penelope. We've got to make some plans. First, we'll... Why does it always happen to me? What do I do that's so wrong? Oh, Miss Audra, this is a surprise. So is that. Well, I've been planning to leave. I've had the urge to move on. You know what they say, a rolling stone gathers no moss. Wait here, I'll be right back. Don't you look like something? Clay Howard loaned me his, uh, his best carriage and a horse you like. I figured a girl as beautiful as Audra Barkley should go to that dance and stuff. Don, I'm sorry I can't go. <laughs> what, what do you mean you can't go? Well, something very important has come up. Yeah, like what? It's personal and 
And it's an emergency. It's something I just have to do. Miss Audra, it's been very nice knowing you. If there's anything I can ever do for you, don't be afraid of calling me. Of course, I never know where I'll be. Me with the wanderlust and all. You're not leaving. I can't go back in there. Even if they begged, I wouldn't let you. There's a room off the barn. You can have your privacy, and Penelope can have her own stall. Come on, I'll show you. See you later, Penelope. Waldo, what do you think of dancing? Well, I only tried it once. Once? Well, you see, I stepped on this girl's foot. Well, that happens to practically every man. Not like me. I broke her toe. <laughs> Main house, uh, leaving you waiting at the gate? She wasn't feeling well. That's all there was to it. Sure got uh, quick cures these days. what he's got that you haven't. Waldo, wait here. I'll be right back. I want to talk to him. Wait, let me explain. Okay, don't you cancel me. You came with him. What's to explain? It's not that simple. He was locked out of the bunkhouse tonight. So? Heaven knows how many places he's been kicked out of, how many backs have been turned on him. Someone has to show they care. Someone has to welcome him back to the human race, and I... Well, I thought this would be one small way. I'm sorry if I hurt you. That wasn't my intention. Listen, do me one favor. Be careful of your toes. Please. Miss Audra? Yes? Remember Sunday out by the stream when I told you how much I like being by myself? Mm-hmm. Well, I gotta tell you now, there are a lot of times when I don't like it at all. To tell you the whole truth, most of the time I don't like it. Most of the times I like being someplace where it's crowded, where everybody's smiling and having a good time and liking each other, like now. To tell you the whole truth, most of the time, I'm just plain lonely. Hold on. To tell you the whole truth, so are a lot of people. Tonight, it's kind of hard to tell the winners from the losers. Yeah? Well, I guarantee you one thing. When I get through, you won't have any trouble. and a delegation from Bunkhouse 3 paid me a visit. If it's about Waldo... Who else? This delegation was headed up by your friend Don Jarvis. Seems he wants to walk out and take 15 men with him. Why couldn't you have left well enough alone, Audra? Waldo's no stray dog, you know. 
Then why is he kicked around like one? Has that ever occurred to you? I'll pay him off. He won't take it. You think? He's not looking for charity. How do you know so much about this? All right, that's enough, both of you. Audra is right. Now, wait a minute. Well, so are you, in a way. So I'd say a compromise is in order. Such as? Well, it seems simple to me. Simple? The men will not work with Waldo in the orchard. We'll take him out of the orchard. And you, Audra, you say he won't accept charity. All right, we will find him a legitimate paying job. Now, there are plenty of those this time of year. I ask you, what's wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. That's what's wrong with it. He's still on this property. This is my property, Jarvis. This is Barkley property. Had it your way. But I want him off of here and fast. You want him off, huh? That's right. Now, you better leave a little room, Mr. Barkley. Because if he's not off of here by noon tomorrow, we will be. And more will follow. Well, now, let me let you in on something. If you, or you, or you, Hank, or any one of you walk from here, I'll see to it that not one of you get one hour's work in this whole valley. Who are you trying to block? You know these men got the pick of the places around here. As a matter of fact, I've already checked with McGarrett. They got a special invite to come over to his ranch anytime they want to. So you take your choice. Diefendorfer or them. Penelope, how do you like this for accommodations? Your own stall and my own room. No, it's real. It's not a dream. All the bad luck is behind us now. No more dark clouds. From now on, my fine friend, nothing but sunshine. Oh, no. Oh, no, it can't be it. It never rains this time of year. It really means business this time. for anybody in the whole valley. Yeah. Talk about your Jonas. Boy, that is some storm out there. I, uh, just came home to see if there was anything I could do to help. If you can stop time, fine. We got 35 minutes to deadline. Or else maybe you can figure a way to stop this rain. You mean to tell me those men out there really believe that Waldo started this storm? According to the last petition, 28 of them do, yes. Now, what you really mean is that that Jarvis fellow has got them believing it, right? I don't know what to believe now. What's this, Nick? You thinking of giving in? No, I'm just doing a lot of thinking, so. Well, while you are, think about this. You give some people an inch, Nick, and they take a mile. If I know you, you're not going to give anybody a mile, no matter what you're thinking right now, and you know it. All right, how do we win, Jared? <sighs> well, I don't know. Maybe it's more important sometimes, Nick, to, to know how to lose. Barkley. Any minute now, Barkley will be coming through the door, and that'll be the end of Waldo Diefendorfer. Want to bet? Come here. I'd say it looks like Waldo is settling down for a long stay. 
listen to me. You can forget about those blankets Miss Audra gave you, and you can forget everything the Barclays told you. You're getting out of here. Yeah, but... No but! You pack up your gear, you get on that mangy burr, and you ride. Now, come on, move! Let him go! Don't you know when you've had enough? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I thought you'd be doing this. What can I do? Well, first, have a better opinion of yourself. Have some faith in you. How can I, when from the day I was born, I brought bad luck? Even that day, after the doctor delivered me, he fell down the porch steps and broke his leg. That was his bad luck, not yours. I don't want to cause any trouble here. I don't believe you. That's just your excuse. The fact is, you're feeling sorry for yourself. You always have. You're not running to help anybody. You're running because you're a coward. You're not noble, and, and you're not a man. You're just a sheep leading yourself to slaughter. Why don't you for once stand your ground? Why don't you for once try a little faith? Oh, what's the use? She doesn't understand, Penelope. Come on. anything. I wouldn't dare. But I just gotta ask you now. You see, I can't go on like this anymore. But to tell you the truth, I don't want to. Besides, I can't be someone else, can I? I mean, a person is stuck with being what he is, right? But I need your help now. Nothing big or important. Just a little something. Please. Yours truly, Waldo Diefendorfer. I never expected anything this big. Especially the first time. Gee, thanks, sir. You know, Waldo, this is the best season we ever had. Me too, Hank. Look, uh, me and the boys are headed north for the Feather River. How about joining us? Sure, friend. Great. Wouldn't want to lose our good luck charm. Hear that, Miss Audra? You brought me a change of luck. Change of fate. Oh, yeah.
see you. See you, Waldo. Oh, here I go again. It's not what you think, Waldo. Nick's up there diamiting. We're just bringing water down from the high lake. Oh. See you. Bye. Goodbye. Thanks for stopping them horses. Get on down there. Come on. Where are you going? Get over there. Get Stay. Come on, old man. Hurry it up. You cover them, Wilt. I'll get the box. We have to let go, shipman. I'm afraid you're a bit late. Shut up. Gold in here? Go look in the boot. The driver mentioned it went out yesterday. Well, he's telling the truth. All right, get your boots off. Get them off or you'll die in them. All right, get walking. Get walking, go on. Too good. I sure did have my heart set on some gold. We're just going to have to go down to Stockton and get it. Hey!
Would you mind going to the next window? I was just cl Oh, well, now. We'd like to open up an account. An account? Well, yes, ma'am. You come to the right bank and uh, the right window. <laughs> oh, if you'll just fill out this form. Uh, it's just one thing. Uh, we heard tell there's been some robberies around here. Is this uh, bank safe? You sure of that? You've got a good, strong vote. Well, there it is right there. It, uh, it's the latest. Came all the way from St. Louis. Well, if it wasn't safe, you can bet the Cattlemen's Association wouldn't put their money in it every Friday. Sure looks strong. Uh, we have a deputy making the rounds every night also. Every hour on, on the hour. On the hour. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Sign the papers, Grady. Oh, uh, there's a, a pen right over there. Um, uh, are you and, uh, and your husband are going to live nearby? Well, it depends if we can find the property that we're looking for. And uh, he's my brother, not my husband. Oh. Well, if I may um, offer my services, perhaps I could have the pleasure of showing you around some afternoon. Uh, there are some very, very fine places for sale. I don't know if a lady would be safe with you when you're out of your cage. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll let you know. Grady, you can take me to lunch. Him and his old vault. Came all the way from St. Louis. Hey, hey. Maybe we ought to send him a letter back there, you know. Uh, compliment them on it and all. <laughs> After we bust it open. Well, uh, you pay the check. And um, be sure and leave a big tip. We're gonna be able to afford it. Jesse? Supplies. No, you go get them. I got a hankering for some five card draw poker. You gonna play poker? Hmm. Dilly, you make yourself noticeable. People notice me anyhow. Well, yeah, yeah. Carl and Wilt are waiting first. I'll be out later. Besides, I feel lucky today. Poker, young lady. Not part cheesy. I think I'll sit right here. We well, won't feel a bit good taking your money, ma'am. Name's Dilly. Dilly Shanks. And I won't feel a bit bad about taking yours. Playing cards with a woman, that's no game. Who's deal? Yours. We uh, each get five cards. Dollar ante, five's the limit. If that don't scare you off now. Deal. Cowboy. I'll try to. I ain't even gonna try. Two. And, um, I think I'll help myself to one. Cowboy. Looks like today's not my day. Oh, day's not over yet. Well, let's play cards. A dollar. You got yourself bit, mister. And a race. You're bluffing, that's what I think. I'm bluffing? 
raise me. A call. Feel that straight, slick as butter. Yeah, it was slick, all right, just like every other hand you've dealt. Now, you try to tell me something, mister. I think you've been jennying up the cards. That's what I think. You said that nice and loud. Now, don't you keep me waiting too long for an apology. Well, I, uh... Come on, mister. You can speak a lot plainer than that. Apologize. Why, thank you. Well, I guess that ends the game. Uh, say, Heath, you're going to have time to help me with that fencing tomorrow? Or do your feet hurt you too much? Nothing wrong with my hands. I'll tackle that section down by the sawmill bridge. Thanks, Heath. Miss Dilly, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> do you work for him? No, he's a neighbor. Just helping out. They say God helps them that helps themselves. Pretty hard-hearted, aren't you? As I have to be, when I have to be. Anyways, that critter ought to know it ain't right to call a lady a cheat. I think he just learned that lesson. i tell you what, Heath. My, that sure is a pretty name. Um, seeing that I'm the big winner, how about me buying you a drink, hmm? No, thanks. I gotta be going. But, uh, when I'm ready, I'll buy you that drink, Mr. Dilly. Nothing better to do than sit around soaking up whiskey. Well, you wouldn't let us go into town. What do you want us to do? Sit around and crochet doilies? <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's funny, Will. Oh, hush up. If you two go into town, you get into nothing but trouble. It took you so long. When we want to do that bank and get out of here. I want us some money. That's what took me so long. Besides, we're going to let that bank wait. Wait? We know how to get in and out of there. What do we got to wait for? Grady, you wouldn't know beans in a bag. You heard the tell of blabbing about the Cattlemen's Association making a big deposit on Friday? Yeah, maybe so, but I sure get jumpy having to hang around. Yeah, me too, Dilly. Why don't we just grab that gold like we planned and be on our way? And just forget about the extra money. Hmm. Not buy a jugful. We'll take the bank on Friday. But I don't like it around here. Well, I do. So that settles that. doesn't look too wild to me. Well, who knows what goes on in a horse's head? Or in a woman's? What's that? Well, it could have happened. I doubt it. I don't think too many horses got the nerve to run away with you. 
You know, I'm beginning to like it around here more and more. Well, are you planning on settling here? Well, my brother Grady and I are looking for some land to buy. We aim to be real neighborly. You marry? Nope. Promised anyone? No. Well, how about you being real neighborly? And Well, you must know some places around here for sale. How about showing me a few? Well, maybe. If uh, you promise to teach me to play poker like that. <laughs> well, my daddy was a gambler on them Mississippi River boats. They used to call him Velvet Harry because he dressed so well and had such good manners. He used to have his hair cut twice a week. And he sure knew his way around a deck of cards. Why, well, ever since I was just little Dickens, he used to play with me. I think the first words I ever learned were, Annie up, folks. Well, I'll tell you what, Dilly. I was just about ready to finish up here. If you're heading into town, well, I'll buy you that drink now. How would you like a nice, uh, lemonade? Lemonade? Why, yes. I think I'd like that. Bank with me, Audrey? Oh, no, thank you. I want to look at some clothes. Well, I'm not clothes on from Europe to sink the boat. I said look, not buy. See you at Jared. Excuse me. I was just about to try that on. What do you think? I think it's very becoming, but I, I think it could be straightened a little. Well, maybe you could use some straightening yourself. You did ask me. I wasn't talking about the hat. I was talking about you and he. Well, what about us? Who are you? I happen to be a very close acquaintance of his, if you want to know. A close acquaintance? Mm. More than a close acquaintance if you want to know. And I'm telling you, whoever you may be, that you just better keep away from him or you're going to be sorry. I gather you have a romantic interest in him, Miss... Miss Shanks. And you gather rightly. Now, look, um, I don't aim to get ugly about this. It's just that, well, love, we have an understanding, that's all. I see. Well, you certainly don't have to worry about me, Miss Shanks. I could never be a rival of yours. Glad to hear it. Besides, Heath and I, we plan to see a lot more of each other. So if you'll just excuse me. I have some things to buy. Then she said you'd better keep away from him or you'll be sorry. Well, you should have told her that uh, you were his sister. Audra, you could have been shot stone cold dead. I didn't think of that. Well, you know what they say. Hell hath no fury like a... Well, for a minute there, I thought I forgot to put my pants on. <laughs> Morning. Morning. I uh, say, Nick, I won't be able to check out that will this afternoon. Oh, it can wait. You, uh, have something more interesting to do? I promised to show somebody around the old Webster place. Uh, anyone I know? I don't think so. Pass it, butter. It's right in front of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Mother. Good morning, Heath. Good morning. Well, I know it's very early in the morning, but I detect something's going on. What is it? Nothing, really. I, I was just about to tell Heath I met a friend of his yesterday in town, a, a Miss Shanks. She seems to think quite a lot of him. Was that right? Pass the sugar. Right in front of you. Oh. oh, more than that, she just about challenged Audra here to a duel. I understand Audra wouldn't stand the chance. She draws like a hired gun. Oh, she sounds like a fascinating creature. I'd like to meet her. Oh, we'd all like to meet her. Meantime, why don't we let Heath have his breakfast in peace? Yes, we ought to let him have a peaceful breakfast. Because he's probably in for an exciting afternoon. Of course, it'll be a lot of work, but there's water here, and that's the main thing. Water, that's the main thing. How many head of cattle your brother figured on running? Well, I don't know for sure. You like this place, Heath? Well, who wouldn't? It's some of the best land in the valley. Did you ever think about settling down? 
Have a place of your own? Oh, I've got my own place. You do? My family and I, we run a few head. Family. That ain't the same as having a place of your own. You know, like a man and a woman having theirs. You ever think about that? Well, it passes through my head every once in a while. Funny. I never thought about such a thing in my whole life before. Yeah, well, uh, guess we better be getting back, huh? I sure do like you, Heath. Thank you, Dilly. I, I like you. Well, that ain't what I mean. What I mean is, uh, well, I guess I mean I love you. Love me? We just met. Oh, well, don't you go laughing at me. Well, I know it ain't a girl's place to be saying it first, but when I have something on my mind, I say it right out, okay? Okay. Well, if you're surprised, it ain't nothing compared to what I am. Why, if somebody told me I'd be feeling this way, I... But I do. That's all there is to it. Why else would I feel like... Well, like there's a big bell ringing inside me every time I even just think about you. Do you love me, Heath? Just a little bit? Well, you don't have to answer that. Not yet. All I know is that I love you, that I want you, and that I'm gonna have you. That wasn't so bad, was it? No, Dilly, that, uh, that was nice. Well, now you understand how things are. I don't think you understand. When I love a woman, it's got to be in my own time. Why, sure, Heath. Take your time. Take all the time you want. And it's got to be in my own way. And she's, well, well she's just got to let it happen. And I've got to do all the courting. Sure, Heath. You can't help the way you feel, neither. I understand. Let's get back. Swipe it, I bought it. Hey, get your hands off that. I don't want you to mark the trim. What'd you go spend all our money for? You don't need a saddle like that. Besides, it's kind of big for you, in it? Quit your bleating. It ain't for me. Well, who's it for, then? A personal friend of mine. Not that it's any of your how to do. Hey, just what I've been aiming to do. Take a bath. Well, now, wait, wait a minute. It's my turn now. After me. You, uh, um, you, uh, figuring on giving this saddle to that big cowboy you've been seeing? <laughs> you must be pretty sweet on him. You know he was one of them passengers on the stage, don't you? I was wondering where I've seen him before. Now, as to whether I am sweet on him or not, what if I am? Oh, uh, well, uh, no one's saying that you can't have your fun, Dilly. <laughs> You've done it before. It's just that, uh, you, uh, start getting serious, and that's trouble. That's nothing but trouble. You gotta remember that we got that bank waiting for us, and then we're on our way. Well, I guess this is as good a time as any to tell you. I'm staying in Stockton. Now, what kind of talk is that? Dilly, what are you gonna do in Stockton over by yourself? That's just plain dumb. It ain't so dumb to own your own ranch. There's a place around here I can get reasonable. Besides, I'm getting married soon. You? Married? <laughs> ain't pretty good. <laughs> uh, did he ask you? Just about. Well, he ain't the type that goes around passing out proposals to every girl he meets. But he's just as good as told me that we'll be getting married soon. Now, uh, you know that there ain't no cowboy makes enough money to keep a wife. Especially one like you. He's got some land of his own. And a few heads. That, on top of what I intend to buy for us, you do pretty good. Well, uh, let me see now. Uh, you you plan on settling down and working a few acres of land and running a few heads and, and uh, <laughs> living happily ever after, huh? You just called the turn, Grady. Me and Heath, we're gonna sell down, work the spread, put in a few saddle stalls. 
and the best breed of cattle. And I'm gonna have my own garden just outside the kitchen. Well, naturally, well, someday, we'll have a few children, five or six, and they'll work look, right alongside their daddy. Can we come see you? Sure. But I don't want you hanging around too long. Well, that is nice. That's nice. That's real pretty. But uh, where are you going to get the money for this ranch? For my share of the bank on Friday. That's still on. I'm going with you. It's just going to be my last time, that's all. Then you boys are going to be out on your own. Uh, let's us uh, get out of here and keep our little privacy. Grady, what, uh, Grady, what are we going to do without Dilly? And you know she's the one who does all the figuring. There ain't no reason why we can't do all right without her. You think that you're fooling yourself? We ain't nothing without her. You know it. Maybe she'll let me come stay with her when she gets married. She ain't getting married. Well, Grady, you heard what she said. I said she ain't getting married. We're going to make sure that that cowboy don't marry nobody's sister. from sun up to sun down. There's a man you could trust with your life. Your father said that. Oh, he lived by it, too. I had to be in the boss of a lumber company. I guess that was before he became a riverboat gambler. I never could remember which one was first. Come here. How you like the saddle, Heath? <laughs> well, that's probably the fanciest saddle I ever saw in my life. It's yours. Dilly, I can't accept this. Well, why not? That rig of yours is all worn out. Well, that's not it. Uh, a girl giving a man an expensive gift like that, well, it just isn't right. Well, I don't see why not. You care for somebody. You just naturally want to give them things. Dilly, if anyone around here is going to be given presents, it's going to be me. You want to repay me for it? You can take me out to dinner. And I do mean dinner. Let's see, steaks, wine, lots of them fancy little cakes. Dilly, this, this saddle's worth a thousand dinners. You just talk me into it. A thousand dinners, starting tonight. But, Dilly. Dilly, there are a few things we got to talk about. Later. After dinner. Come on. Yes, it is. A gift from someone? How'd you know? Because I know you, and that's not the kind of a saddle you'd buy for yourself. From Dilly? Yeah. Well, she must think an awful lot of you. I guess so. And you, Heath? She's not like any girl I ever met, Mother. She's one of a kind. I've heard stories. Well, they're true. She's as ladylike as a rebel yell. She gambles, she... Uh, she chases a man instead of the other way around. She uh, says exactly what she feels. I guess you might say she's like a little girl. Just plumb full of surprises. You never know what she's gonna do next. But uh, when I'm with her, I... Well, I don't know, I... I feel like smiling all the time. But you're returning the saddle. Well, it's the third time today I've loaded it up. I don't want to hurt her feelings, but I can't accept this. Otherwise, she'll think you feel something you really don't. Huh? That's exactly it, Mother. 
And whatever it is I feel, I, I don't think it's love. Then she has a right to know that, if you're sure. I'm sure. Barclay Ranch? This is the Barclay Ranch, miss. All of it? From the gate. The one back yonder, about five miles? That's the one. Oh, wait. Miss Barclay, this young lady is looking for Mr. Heath. He left for town. Oh. Oh, well, that's all right. I was just out riding and I thought I'd drop by. But it's okay, because he's going to be taking me out to dinner tonight. You must be Miss Shanks. Dilly. Please, come in and have some coffee with me. Oh, all right. Silas. He must have told you about me. A little. Well, he ain't exactly talkative. Not like I am. I think maybe that's one of the reasons I feel about him the way I do. Anyway, I could never get along with anybody like me. You're in love with Heath, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. And that's coming straight out with him. And I'll tell you something else. He loves me, too. And one of these days, we aim to be married. Oh. Well, he hasn't exactly come out with it yet. But he's sure been hitting round. Miss Shanks, I... Dilly, I know Heath pretty well. And he's not the kind that hints around. Are you really sure he feels this way? Well, I know him pretty well, too. And I say we aim to be married. And I hope you ain't got to talk against it. No. No, I'd be happy to welcome any girl of Heath's choice. It's just that I feel... Well, maybe you don't think I'm good enough for a place like this. Well, let me tell you, my daddy was in the cotton business down south, and we had a house big as this, even bigger. Well, it's not a question of a house or how big it is. I'm talking about Heath's feelings for you. You see, Dilly, when you love somebody and you want a future with them, it's very easy to misunderstand. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I know what you're talking about. I ain't that green. You just don't take to me. Well, that's plain. But it ain't gonna stop us. No, Dilly, no, you're mistaken. You pick a fight with me, Mrs. Barclay, and you're gonna lose. And maybe even get hurt in the bargain. <laughs> You could have taken care of them yourself, Heath. 
But I sure am glad I come right. Something wrong? You always clean a gun like that, Dilly? Well, my daddy used to teach the Army how to use and protect their weapons. So every time I shoot... Every time you shoot? Well, when I'm out hunting and all. Hey, what's the matter? You said you came in on that stage Thursday morning. You and your brother? I don't recollect that. You don't recollect saying it, or you don't recollect coming in on that stage Thursday? Come to think of it, I couldn't have been on the stage Thursday. That was the day there was some sort of fuss. You were on the stage Thursday. Oh, well, no, I don't recollect saying that. Well, I just, uh, there was talk. Yes, that's it. We come in Friday morning. You came in on the stage Friday morning? Mm hmm Dilly, there's no stage in the Stockton until late Friday afternoon. Now, who are those men? Well, how should I know? Because they stopped shooting when they saw you. Four riders who held up that stage. Their leader cleaned a gun like you just did. You're talking crazy. I don't think so, Dilly. It was you who led those riders. It was you who killed that stage driver. Now, those men, who are they? Them three's my brothers. And the four of you, a gang. How long you been in this business? Ever since we found out farming a hard rock farm was as good as being dead. You took up robbing and killing people? That's right. We did. I've been all over, seen plenty, had exciting times, and I liked it. That's the truth. I did like it. I guess we just weren't the type to sit on a hard rock farm and without a dime in our pockets. So to put a dime in your pockets, your brothers are ready to kill for $6.20. That's exactly what I've got on me. That ain't why the bushwhacked you. They tried to kill you because of me. I told them that we were getting married. Married? How could you tell them that? You know, that's not true. But you don't understand, Heath. I've given up all that wild stuff. I'm going to settle down and make you a good wife. Tilly, just because you want something, that doesn't mean that's the way things are. Well, what about the Webster place? You said you liked it. And you said you want to settle down someday and be married. Nobody try and make you a better wife than me, Heath. I swear it. Besides, I never met anybody like you before. I'd do anything for you. I'm so in love with you. Dilly, I'm not in love with you. And even if I could be, this changes everything. Can't you see that? Sure you're not in love with me. Rich folks never take to anybody but their own kind. I seen that big house of yours and that fancy butler. What would you want with plain folks like me? Dilly, I saw you kill a man. Forget that. I don't think I could. Well, I help you forget it, Heath. Heath, I've changed. I know I have. I'd do anything in the world for you. I'd be anything. Please help me, Heath. I'm sorry, Dilly. I'd like to walk away and forget I ever met you, but I can't. Turn around. You would have turned me in, wouldn't you? I'd have turned you in. You just got to naturally tell the truth, don't you? Killing me's not going to change things. Well, it might make me feel a whole lot better. Now, I've got another plan for you, so you just get off. Come on, move. Up, Will. Get on over there. Up buddy. against the post. Put your hands behind your back. Tie him up. Well, now, Dilly, isn't that a funny way to treat your intended? Don't you give me none of your jaw. He ain't gonna be nobody's intended. Then what's he doing here? We're gonna use him when we take the bank. Use him? Oh, ain't you got nothing in that head of yours? With him around, nobody's gonna start shooting at us. Boy, you sure are singing a different tune about him now, ain't you? You never mind my tune. He tried to make a fool out of me, and I don't take that off nobody. Tried to? I think he'd done it. 
Look, you said all you're going to say on that, because I don't want to hear no more about it. No, sir. Nobody at that bank's going to start shooting at him. Him and his family own half of this valley. What are you going to do with him when we're through? Well, there'll probably be some shooting there. He's liable to be hit by a stray bullet while we're riding out, huh? <laughs> Grady? That's the best idea you had all year. <laughs> I sure didn't expect him home early. From what I saw of Dilly, saying goodnight's not going to be that easy. Pretty girl, full moon shining down. Could have just changed his mind, you know. You know, this is plain crazy, Dilly. I know that bank. It's too well guarded. You'll never get away with it. Well, if you'd loved me like I loved you, none of this would have happened. I can't help the way I feel. Well, you never gave it a chance. I know I've done some bad things. I ain't saying anything different. But I got some good in me, Heath. I know I do. If you'd just taken to me, all that good would have come pouring out. You wouldn't have noticed anything else. It just doesn't work that way, Dilly. Well, that's all you can say, ain't it? Well, I wouldn't take your love now if you offered it to me on a silver tray. Trouble with you is you don't know what a woman is. A real woman, like me. I know you're a real woman, Dilly. You don't know nothing. You ever been kissed like this? Hmm? Or like this? All right, Dilly. We're getting out of here right now. wasn't worth it. I'm glad it's over. It ain't over yet. Dilly. Not until I give him one last thing to remember me by. But, but he's gone. Dilly, he's got our fastest horse, and we can't catch him in the dark. The ranch is there. It hasn't moved. Mr. Heath Barkley won't be so high and mighty with that fancy house of his a pile of ashes. You, you mean burn him out? Right down to the ground. 
Dilly, he's going to get the sheriff. We got no time. We got time? They ain't going to look for us there. Now, look, you don't want to come along. You get your own self out of this fix. Well, we best be fast about it then. Come on. Why don't you go into bed? I'll turn those on. I thought you'd gone to sleep. No, I felt a little restless, so I thought I'd do some work in the payroll. Good night. Good night. the ball. You get the hat. Leave it burn.
talk to the sheriff. He caught Dilly's brothers. I didn't think they'd make it without her. Well, perhaps Dilly would have made it if she hadn't come back for you. Never did get around to returning the saddle. Why didn't you? I don't know. So you going for a ride? Mm-hmm. You know, I got a hundred things to do, but mind if I go along? I was just about to ask you. It ain't exactly what I'd buy for myself, but I kind of like it. I'm Wilmer. Wilmer Hammett. I'm the one that sent the telegram. Well, I'm grateful to you for your kindness. Well, a man ain't got a right to call himself neighbor. He ain't helpful. Uh, the house is right up the street. Well, we still can't believe it happened. The Millers were the best you could find. Their girl, Elaine. Uh, she was so pretty. So happy to have your daughter visiting. Well, that's, that's where we buried them. You know, it's hard as blazes to walk by without wanting to go after those pigs that murdered them and then... Well, I guess I'm getting too old for that. But if there's a just God, someday somebody will catch them. And they'll get their due. Why did they kill the Millers? Was there any reason? Well, Sam, Mr. Miller, that is, Sam was still alive when we got there. Well, she wasn't able to say much, except uh, they were drunk, broke in the house, figuring to find money. And when they didn't, they, they just went mad. Tortured them first. Elaine, well, they used a knife on Elaine before they, before they shot him. Where was my daughter? I found her in the attic bedroom. Thank God they didn't know she was there. I'd like to see her now, please. Oh, yes, sure. Of course. Audra. Audra, I'm so good. Audra. Didn't you tell her? Tell me what? Well, I... I tried. The shock. She must have seen what happened. She can't hear her talk. It's like she never saw any of us before. Audra? Oh, my God! several times, Mr. Lassiter. Well, it ain't helping it to sink in any better by the repeating of it, is it? We're all on the same short water ration, same as me. All on account of the same stupidity of this here stage line. 
You're all acting like I'm first cousin to a loco weed because I'm the only one that's got sense enough to holler about it. Well, seeing as we're practically nose to nose, maybe you ought to stop hollering just out of respect to the ladies. Well, my hollering ain't going to bother that girl now, not with what ain't her. Why don't you shut up? No, it ain't that I don't have feelings for her sickness, ma'am, or respect for you. It's just that when something riles me, I gotta let it out. Well, I think you've done just that, Mr. Lasseter. But no amount of complaining will fix a leaky water barrel or replace the water we lost, will it? No, complaining won't do that, no. But if we all stuck together, all right, we might be able to get back half of our bear. Why, Mr. Lasseter, I'm disappointed in you. A man who owns his own gold mine? Nuggets sticking out of his pockets? I suppose it's the business of a professional gambler to know what's in everybody's pockets, Mr. Matson, but you ain't going to be any more hopeful of getting me into a stud poker game in Stockton as you was back in the depot waiting for this stage. Well, if everybody was as astute as you are, Mr. Lasseter, I would have to find myself a new occupation, which no doubt would be good for my soul, but would certainly deprive my spirit. Okay. I suggest we all just uh, keep quiet and allow Mrs. Barkley and her daughter to get a little rest. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Matson. But please don't let our presence interfere with your pleasure. My daughter and I have overcome bigger problems. Stopping for water rations? We're stopping for a lame horse. You can all get out and stretch your legs. Uh, Miss Barkley, I, uh, make it my business to mind my own, but I just can't help thinking a girl as beautiful as your daughter certainly should be blessed with a voice to match. She has a beautiful voice. I've been on some hard luck trips in my life, but this beats it. Fool horse picked up a pebble under his shoe. Now, you ain't gonna stop to rest him, are you? I gotta be in Stockton tomorrow. I ain't resting him. I'm leaving him. He can't hardly touch ground with that hoof. But we're three hours late already. And you're gonna be later. All right, everybody. Half a cup of water each. No more. And let's make it fast. I haven't had enough trouble. Now we gotta lose a horse. Hey, 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 hey. You heard the man. Half a cup. This is for the women. Can't hold them to half rations. Miss Barkley? When she finishes this, uh, I'll bring you some more. Well, it seems to me you brought us our full quota. I'll share it with her. Well, nobody minds if the women have a bit more. We do. But thank you just the same. Audra, I have some water for you. Now, Audra, I know you're thirsty. And we're not going to get any more water for a long time. So please turn around and you can have some. Audra? Let's head him up. Come on, you yeah! Short of water, driver. We're short of water, and we're shy of horse. You can't expect this stage line to be worried about that. Well, now, Mr. Lasseter, the company figured there'd be days like this when there'd be lame horses and leaky water kegs and bothering and complaining passengers. So they set up relay stations. There's one maybe 10, 15 miles down the trail. Well, why didn't you say so? Why didn't you ask? Let me help you, ladies. fascinating game of chance, Roy, is a game called Jaman de Fair. You won't find that game played in any of the army barracks or in the saloons. Europe is where they play that game. Europe, where they
They never even heard a five-card stud. And that's where I'm going to take my woman when we get married. Got a nice sound to it, don't it? Honeymoon in Europe. You contemplating marriage, Mr. Lester? I didn't know that. Oh, yes. That's why I'm going to Stockton. That's where she's waiting for me. Hmm. Man spends 20 years getting rich, and in one second, just long enough to say I do, he loses half his fortune. Perhaps that one second will enrich his life far more than a gold mine. Well, now that depends upon the woman, Mrs. Barkley. That depends upon the woman. Takes a woman to recognize quality. Now, wouldn't you say she had quality, ma'am? Ah, oh, yes, she's lovely. Congratulations. Hey, we got company. Hey! Hey, let that fella catch up with us. Let him ride inside. Hitch up another horse. Uh I don't think he plans on joining us. Well, all right. It's gonna be so doggone private. I suggest you get it out. Well, I'm a prospector, not a gambler. I never had any need of weapons. And you've been lucky so far. I sincerely hope your luck holds out. other than gold. There are many reasons a man might use a gun. Nobody's riding shotgun on the stage, so he's got to know we're not carrying a strong box. I've got 3,000 gold nuggets on me. If he comes at me, I'll give $500 to the one who cuts him down. $500. Well, if he is interested in money, I think he's after higher stakes. Mrs. Barkley is a rich woman. She'd bring a big ransom. You'd have to climb over me. And I don't need no offer of pay, either. Seems to me I spend the best part of this journey thanking you. That soldier suit sure gives you a lot of guts, don't it, Sonny? Well, maybe everybody's right. Maybe he don't want money. Maybe he just wants revenge. Maybe he's a breed out there under those white man's clothes, looking for revenge for the massacre of his tribe that you soldier boys pulled off. I never massacred nobody. I never had this uniform on until three days ago. I just signed up and I got a two-week furlough before I have to report. Mr. Lassiter? You haven't said one right word since you got on this stage. Well, maybe this is the right one. Maybe he's after you. Maybe you second-carded him in a poker game and won his ranch. Or hearing your low opinion of women, maybe you ruined his sister or took his wife. Maybe you'd like to get your head blown off. Put up the gun, Matson. You're scaring the girl. I, I didn't mean nothing. I didn't mean nothing. Put up that gun, I said. Stay out of this, Roy. Wouldn't you say, gentlemen, that the rider out there is getting just what he wants? We're at each other's throats. Hey, he's gone. Oh, now I never was one to hold grudges. 
and I ain't too stubborn to, to make apologies. <laughs> we, we, we got 10 or 12 hours before Stockton. I say, let's just forget all these little disagreements. That's better, Mr. Lester. Relay station! Water's over there. It's awful quiet. Suits me fine. Been salted. Look. You better get inside. Just sitting out there on that ridge like a vulture. Well, we'll just sit right here and out waiting. I'll see if I can find something to eat. Lasseter? How about a nice, uh, friendly game of cards? Somebody has a match, I'll put a fire under it. Here you are, ma'am. Audra? Hmm. You can bet your bottom dollar that leak in the water keg was no accident. What about that pebble that lamed our lead horse? <laughs> well, you're all talking kind of crazy, like that fellow's some kind of a magician or something. Like he can be all places at one time, like, like, like he knows every move we make. You in the cabin! You won't get hurt, you do what you're told. I want the girl. Leave the girl, the rest of you can ride out, else you'll all die. <laughs> You'll be ready in a few minutes. You recognize it? You've been shopping at Chef's ever since it opened, just before you left for High Ridge. Remember, you bought Nick a pair of silver spurs there because he stayed up two nights helping you fold Betsy. Uh, Nick is your brother, and you'll be seeing him soon, and you'll be seeing your other two brothers, Jared and Heath. Oh, Audra. Audra, Audra, I know what you've been through. It was a nightmare. But it's over now. It's all over. 
You can't shut your mind off forever. Audrey, you are going to listen to me. I am going to make you remember. Now listen to me. Now, we'll start at the beginning. You were in the attic bedroom. Two drunken cowboys broke into the house. And when they couldn't find what they wanted, they tortured the millers. They used a knife on the lane. Nothing could stop them. And then they killed them. Now face it. Face it. They killed them in cold blood. They would have killed you, too. But they couldn't find you. But you're safe now. You're here with me, and you're safe. And I won't let anybody hurt you. I'm going to take you home. Home to the family that loves you. I... Oh, God. Oh. Oh, God. You stink to high heaven, Lassiter. Well, why should we give up our lives for some girl we never laid eyes on three days ago? Well, that's what we're all thinking, ain't it? Oh, shut up, will you? Now let the man talk. Man's got a right to talk. Anyways, look at it. She can't understand a word we're saying. Do you, honey? Keep these. That's a pretty good trick, Matson. Now, how about making that rider disappear? She don't know sun up from a high wind. I say we ought to do what that fella out there says. Leave her here and we ride on. Well, how do we know? Maybe he don't mean her any harm. Now, who'd want to hurt a girl who, who ain't, well, well, ain't all there? Why would anybody want to send a girl who ain't all there? to whatever's outside that's turning some men's backbone into sawdust. If you weren't her ma, you'd feel the same as the rest of us. As you? Us, not counting the soldier boy. Now, he can believe all the mush he's fed about protecting the flag and the female race. But for me, I say you got no right asking the rest of us to stick our necks out. What do you say, Mr. Matson? Ma'am, I'm waiting for my ration of water so I can wash down these beans. Not that they're not cooked to a turn, ma'am. Is that all you can think of? No, Roy, Mr. Matson's right. He's a practical man. It is time for our water ration. Well, the water barrel's still on the stage. There should be enough in that to go around. You were about to express an opinion, Mr. Matson. I'm wondering why... why this man... Took so much trouble to, to get this girl. It's plain as the nose on your face, ain't it? A man doesn't have to attempt murder to get a girl, Roy. Now, why are we jawing about that? Who cares why he wants her? Miss Barkley, earlier today you said that your daughter had a beautiful voice. Would it be too painful to tell us how she lost it? 
She saw three people tortured and murdered before her eyes. One of them a young girl, her best friend. And the shock was too much for her. And why was she spared? She was in the attic bedroom. And the killer didn't see her. And that's why he's coming here now to kill her so that she won't identify him. A skunk like that ain't fit to breathe the same air she does. I'd get a real joy killing a man like that. Well, you have your chance, Roy. He's waiting right out there on that ridge. I'm betting, Mrs. Barkley, that he's the one that's hounding us. You betting against it? Does it matter? No, it don't. I've been rooting in the rocks and the mud for 20 years. At last, to give me a chance to come up for air, I ain't gonna let nothing stop me. He's only one man. Pretty good man. He's got our food, our water. You're four to one. You got a blood feud with the killer. That's your business. My business is to get to Stockton. We'll get to Stockton, Lassiter. Maybe. Maybe too late for me. Maybe she won't be waiting for me. Maybe she'll think I'm not coming. She knows you love her. She'll wait. She don't know nothing about me except what I wrote in my letters. Mail order bride? Something wrong with that? Nothing, nothing. And she will wait for you. If we don't make a deal with that bushwhacker, I'll show up in a box. Oh, no, no, Mr. Lassiter. He's a coward. He'll never come within gun range. He's just trying to scare you off so he can kill a defenseless girl. And please, please don't let him. This is an easy place to defend. I'll take the first shift standing guard. And maybe tomorrow morning the horses will be rested and we can make Stockton by tomorrow night. Hold on, soldier boy. You might be needing this. Four to one, Lassiter. Looks like you lose. Ma'am, this time you keep your water ration. Careful, Mr. Manson. You'll be accused of being gallant. Not guilty. I only have one interest in your well-being, ma'am. We just can't afford to lose a good cook. Sure, I know you're worried. But there's no sense acting like the world's coming to an end just because the stage is a little late. A little late? It's ten minutes past five. Maybe we better ride out of ways, Nick. Look, can't you wait just a little while longer? Maybe they threw a wheel or busted an axle. Now, it'd only take a few minutes to fix a broken wheel, an hour at most for a broken axle. Come on, Nick, we waited too long already. Right. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Sure, I know what must have happened. The bridge over Pride's Gulch went out, and if it ain't been fixed, that means the stage has got to go by way of Greenfield. That'd bring it here in the morning. The morning? Oh, we don't charge any for the extra ride. They would have telegraphed, wouldn't they? Well, they can't do that. The wire ain't been strung through Greenfield yet. Well, we may as well go back to the ranch. Well, I'm sorry, boys. I'll tell them you were here. Yeah. made a move. How do you know? That campfire could be just for show. He could be crawling down that hill at us right now. You think so? I don't know the man. I don't know what's on his mind. If you want me to stay out here with you, I will. No. One of us is enough, I guess. You sure? Yep. I said so, didn't I? There's one good thing. She doesn't know what's happening. I apologize for that, Mrs. Barkley. That's all right, Roy.
and sour dear. Would you like to play, pretty lady? Here. Take it. Red Jack goes on the Black Queen. Oh, my shotgun and a horse, all on account of, of her. She ain't worth nothing. She ought to be put away. Oh, stop it, stop it, both of you. Did you hear what he said? It doesn't matter now. He took the water. Whoever he is up there, he sure knows how to drive the pikers out of the game. These horses don't get water soon. They ain't gonna last. Neither are we, Barney. Well, the Watson Ranch has a line cabin up in the hills. Maybe 20 miles off the trail. They got food stashed away there. Maybe they got water, too. Water? But you're not sure? No, I ain't sure they got water. And I ain't sure two horses in their condition can pull a full stage for 20 miles. Mister, I ain't sure of nothing. Morning, ma'am. I don't suppose he's gone yet. I doubt it. Barney says there may be some water at a cabin up in the hills. Meanwhile, um, why don't you put this in your mouth? Relieve the thirst. The heritage my father left me. Didn't your mother tell you to wash it off first? Oh, my mother. My mother wasn't around long enough to tell me anything. When my father lost his job at the woolen mills at Hartford, why, my mother couldn't stand the strain, so she ran off with a more affluent drummer. I was 10 years old at the time. And so, at 10 years old, your opinion of women was born, hmm? And at 20 years old when I got married for the first time, and at 30 years old when I got married for the second time. And did they run off with affluent drummers, too? Well, frankly, ma'am, I just wiped it out of my mind uh, why my marriages were such a disaster. But don't get me wrong, I don't blame any of them for their lack of character. It's a woman's nature. Well, maybe it was your lack of good judgment. Maybe. Roy, where's Audra? Well, I don't know. Well, I thought she was with you. No. Check the shack in the back. I'll check the stables. Audra. Audra! Mutual, all right? 
They're all right. He's gone! Maybe you got through to him. I hope so. Well, Roy scared him off. In any case, we better get back to the stage. Come on. Mrs. Barkley? Yes, I'm all right. Thank you. Audra's all right, too, Roy. Sure, sure. We're all all right. Now, let's get moving. You sure don't discourage easy. He got us beat. But how did he get here before us? Doesn't matter how. He just did. There ain't a drop of water between here and Stockton. Well, we can survive longer than that without water. Look. Lady, I'm checking out. Oh, no. Will $5,000 get you to stay? Lady, where does a dead man spend $5,000? Don't unhitch that horse. That horse is company property. I just bought it. And Mr. Matson has a gun to see that the deal sticks. Well, if Mr. Matson has the brains of a goose egg, he'll check out with me. Each of you gets $5,000 the minute my daughter and I set foot in Stockton. Oh, I don't need pay for the privilege of escorting you and your daughter to Stockton, Mrs. Barkley. The purpose of the young to make the old seem greedy and corrupt. I accept your offer, Mrs. Barkley. We can't force you to stay. Now, that's a prime choice, ma'am. Go on foot without water and die alone, or stay here and die with some company. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. I'll see to that. All right, Barney, let's get out of here. Could be. Sure, any of us go for that water bag, he's got a clear shot. We've got to have water. Anybody volunteer? He might not shoot at a woman. He might not. He's not gonna let that water bag get back to the stage. And being a woman ain't gonna stand in his way. One man less would suit him just fine. Well, you can quit your arguing. We've got our volunteer.
Molly sure is whittling down the odds. I can drive the stage. Start driving. I figure we got no choice. You're right. Horses have to pull this stage a couple of miles more. They'll drop. And when I ride out of here, you get up in those rocks. One man with a gun up there could hold off an army. If he's going to chase me, he's got to come right by here. So you'll have an easy shot. the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. I'll be back with help. Come. He's not following him. I guess he figures there's just one less man. Let's get up on those rocks. So there was a second one after all. You, you mean that you knew there were two of them? At High Ridge, they told me there were two, but since we only saw one, I thought only one followed us. And you held back, Mrs. Yes, Parker? Yes, I held back. I'd lie. I would do anything to save my daughter. One horse left, mister. You can ride out peaceful. You ride out now. Oh, no, no, you can't. You're not that kind of a man. Lassiter and Barney can ride off to save their own skins, but not you. It would stay with you for the rest of your life. I never go against a stacked deck, ma'am. If there was a chance, But I'd you're stay. not an animal. You can't ride away and leave us. We're all animals, Mrs. Barkley. We're all kin to the beasts of the field. The only difference is man knows he's going to die, and sometimes he gets a chance to die a little later than sooner. And I intend to die later. And leave me your gun. I can't do that, man. Those men may change their mind about letting me go peaceful. I wish there was something I could do. You can leave me your gun. I've got to have a gun. Bye, ma'am. Ardra, come with me. Ardra, come with me. Those men, those men, they want to kill you. Don't you understand? They want to kill you. Now, come with me.
Orchard, here, take my hand. Come on. young boy I told you about, Roy Sanders. I owe him $5,000. I'd, I'd like to send it to his family. Audra, this is Mr. Henry Matson, My daughter, Mr. Matson. How do you do, Mr. Matson? The pleasure is all mine, ma'am. You do have a beautiful voice. You caught the stage at Ravenwood, ma'am, huh? We did. Goodbye. Uh, Miss Barkley. I am, um, I'm glad you made it. And as you predicted, I, I'm finding it difficult to live with myself, if that gives you any satisfaction. It gives me no satisfaction, Mr. Matson. 